Colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths for Hispanics, yet life-saving preventive screening can make a difference. We discussed this important health issue with Dr. Del Rosario. It's all here on the next Latino Motion. Join us. Choose to get lost in the woods to gain experience in forest management. Choose to travel through time to understand the past. Choose to soar to pursue a career in dance. Stockton University offers 50 high-quality academic programs, small class sizes, and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation, and Stockton University. This edition of Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is brought to you by the HD Studios at the campus of Stockton University. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, offering primary, specialty, and urgent care, plus surgery and more. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world, and South Jersey Gas. Health disparities in the Hispanic community is a major concern for us here at Latino Motion and ELMA, an Atlantic Care Employee Resource Group. That is why we are partnering to present this health segment. Tu salud es importante para nosotros. Welcome to Latino Motion, a weekly interview show highlighting issues impacting New Jersey's Latino community while advancing understanding of Latino cultural heritage and contributions to our society. And here is your host, Bert Lopez. Buenos dias and welcome to Latino Motion. Among Hispanics, colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths. Yet, life-saving prevention screening has dropped significantly. We have Dr. Miguel de Rosario. He's a medical director for the Division of Colorectal Surgery at Atlantic Care to discuss more about this health impact. Dr. De Rosario, welcome to Latino Motion. Gracias, Bert. Thank you for having me here today and, and this uh, educational and informational uh, meeting you're imparting on the Hispanic community. It's, it's a great work that you're doing, especially considering the significance of the problem. Yes, and let's talk about that problem, right? And, 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 and let's concentrate on, on, on what the impact uh, is uh, among Latino. There certainly is a disparity uh, in terms of uh, colon-related uh, deaths um, uh, in the Latino community. And yet COVID has also had an impact because there are less people getting screening. Let's talk about that issue. Yeah, so, I mean, the facts are, you know, they don't lie. Uh, colon cancer is the second leading cause of death uh, among Hispanics. Uh, that accounts for about 21% of deaths uh, in the population. That's one out of five people. Uh, the question is, why is it such a large cause or a significant cause of death in the Hispanic population? And that's why we're here to talk today and, and educate the Hispanic community at large to see if they can do something about it. Uh, if you take that fact along with the recent events of the pandemic and the quarantine in the past year, um, the, the number of colon cancer screenings to check or prevent colon cancer plummeted uh, as much as 86% between, between the last March and, and this year. Um, and that doubly affects the, the Hispanic community because we're seeing cancers or colon cancers prevent later and at a later stage with a, a lower survival rate. And it's a big problem. And I know that even before COVID, um, there had been an issue in terms of getting Latinos access mm -hmm. to uh, get the screening, uh, to make the appointments. Uh, so it's still a challenge. Uh, we can't all blame it all on COVID, uh, but why is it so important for this early detection for the screening to take place? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, we're seeing that survival rates after diagnosis and the screening rates are lower in the Hispanic population. Um, we're not quite sure, but the feeling is that part of it may be cultural. Um, it, it, amongst Hispanics, they may think colon cancer is a men or a man only disease, but that's not really true. It affects men and women equally. Uh, so cultural uh, differences or beliefs may be uh, one reason why uh, Hispanics are not getting screened. 
Uh, the other thing is lack of access or less access to timely and high quality treatment. Um, that should never be an issue for this kind of community. There is excellent health care and access, and access to screenings and treatment if you do need the surgery, um, but it's, it's widely available. You just need to be motivated enough to seek the help uh, in order to gain the care, the proper care that you need. And in this community, we certainly can provide that uh, you know, regardless of ethnicity, but especially uh, to the Hispanic community who may feel like they don't have this access to the uh, appropriate and timely health care. Uh, let's discuss some of the, uh, the, 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 the the demographics, if you will, in terms of who is high risk for colon cancer. Uh, it's basically by age, okay. uh, by virtue of age. You can be an Olympic athlete who is a vegetarian, never smoked, never drank a day in your life, and you will still have the same risk for developing colon, answer, uh, colon cancer once you turn 45. So in the average risk individual, uh, screening begins at 45, regardless of symptoms. You may, most people have no symptoms whatsoever, uh, just by age, uh, and, and that's in men and women. Uh, and that is the single most uh, important risk factor uh, for developing colon cancer. What kind of resistance uh, have you seen? And I know part of it is cultural. Uh, in terms of getting uh, the, the screening, I, I know I had it done myself. Um, it was recommended by my doctor, um, uh, but some uh, uh, men, particularly Latinos, uh, uh, don't 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 feel or, or really put it off. They, they totally put it off. Uh, they're not comfortable getting it done. Uh, sure. What do you say to those individuals? Yeah, I mean, having some experience and coming from you know a Latino background and you know, growing up in Hispanic communities as well as taking care of Hispanic patients for almost 20 years, uh, a big part of it is cultural belief and machismo. Um, you know, nobody wants to feel vulnerable. Uh, they, you know, these people may think they're invincible and uh, immune to this problem, uh, but that's not really true. It affects everybody equally. Um, you just have to uh, get screened in order to be prevent the problem from progressing from an, an early polyp uh, to a colon cancer. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the process? And I know it's a, it's a bit intrusive, um, but uh, it is it is painless. Uh, uh, Want to talk a little bit about that process? Sure. Um, and yeah, that's part of the partly part of the reason why people don't get screened uh, because if you think about it, the top three cancers in the United States: uh, uh, lung cancer. Uh, then breast in women and prostate in men, and then colon cancer is among the top three. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three. But, you know, most people get their lungs checked and most people get their breast or prostate checked, but there's a drop-off in screening when it comes to colon cancer. The reason is, is exactly as what you said. It's an invasive and it's a squeamish topic. Nobody wants to talk about a colonoscopy or a check of their intestine. Um, but really, the the process itself is, is, is painless, uh, you're sleeping, and it's, it's not something you need to do every year. It's, it's something you may only need to do every five to 10 years. Uh, you know, at one time it was uh, taboo for women to talk about breast cancer at the dinner table because they were ashamed. It's probably the same way with colon cancer. Nobody wants to make that the topic of daily conversation. But if you look at the numbers, people are dying and, or getting diagnosed with colon cancer so you have to be honest and you have to talk about it and, and get the facts and get, get screened. It's literally, you know, the, the screening is an ounce of prevention uh, versus the pound of cure, which is what I do with the surgery. Uh, let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, uh, your sleep. So th there is anesthesia. Um, it is a, a, a procedure that you go through. Um, again, are there any... Um, a side effects for that process. Yeah, so the, yeah, so the process itself, the procedure itself may take 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and, you know, having had it done in myself at the appropriate age, uh, I know what it's like. The, the worst part is the night before uh, the procedure, you have to take a prep, which is you drink some chemicals or some strong laxatives to give you diarrhea. That's the worst part. And, and the procedure itself, you don't remember of anything any of it in, in your sleep the whole time. 
again, I've went through the process and it, it, uh, it was fine. Uh, no, no issues, obviously, that uh, discomfort at, at the day before, like you mentioned. Well, doctor, we want to discuss uh, 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 a lot more regarding this topic, very important topic, uh, a life-saving topic uh, for many in the Latino community. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. We continue our discussion with Dr. Michael De Ros Rosario. He is the director of, for the Division of Colorectal Surgery at Atlantic Care. And doctor, we were talking uh, about the impact of uh, colon cancer in the Latino community, that certainly the disparity in terms of the number of uh, individuals that do get it, the higher death, death rate, um, and uh, less of the Latinos are getting screened. Uh, but once you are diagnosed um, uh, with uh, colon cancer, they are treat it doesn't have to be a death sentence. Tell me about some of the treatment uh, aspects of colon cancer. Uh, great question, Bert. So, you know, the earlier the diagnosis uh, with any cancer is always better. Um, and that's why we advocate for colonoscopy because you can find small polyps which eventually grow into colon cancer. If the polyps are small enough, they can be removed through the colonoscope, uh, basically curing cancer before it even starts, and you will never need surgery if you remove that benign polyp. Now, if it grows and has become a cancer, um, it's still not a death sentence, as you said. Colon cancer is very treatable. You just have to do something about it. Um, it usually requires surgery, um, and it... Uh, it, it usually does not require a bag. The fear of the bag or the colostomy is, is one of the myths or beliefs that the population has that, they, that maybe, maybe uh, turn them off from seeking help. But most people who are diagnosed with colon cancer do not need that. They would need surgery, but not necessarily the bag. Um, and then after that, uh, if needed, you might need chemotherapy. Um, here in Atlantic County, in this area, we offer the, the, basically the top of the line uh, surgery and treatment for colon cancer to all comers, uh, regardless of whether you're Hispanic or not. But we, we offer the robotic Da Vinci XI surgery at Atlantic Air Hospital in the city division. And we've been doing this uh, for years. Uh, the outcomes are very good. The survival is very good and the cure rate is very good, but you have to do something about it. Um, and then again, as I said, if you have a more advanced disease, you can do chemotherapy with improved survival rates. So Dr. De Rosario, um, you mentioned an important uh, aspect of this uh, regarding the early detention uh, that uh, you could actually prevent the cancer from developing early on. And that, that's something that I, I, I really wasn't familiar with. So uh, uh, to, Tell me a little bit more about that. So that's uh, I, when you've gone through the screening, um, depending on the size of the, of the uh, pilots, uh, they could be removed. Is that a surgical procedure or is that uh, some other procedure that takes place? Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, um, if you catch the colon cancer or the polyp early enough, you would never have to see a surgeon. Um, and that's the basis of screening with the colonoscope. Uh, cancer doesn't just show up in most cases. It starts as a small polyp, which may be the size of a grain of sand, a pea, a marble, and that can be seen on the colonoscopy. And if it's small enough, uh, the colonoscope can remove that polyp and, in, in essence, uh, cure you or prevent it from transforming into colon cancer, and you'll not need surgery in that situation. Now, you, you, you mentioned uh, the age. Um, uh, obviously, uh, uh, you mentioned anyone over 45 should have this done. How often should you have it done? Uh, good question. Yes, age, the, 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 the risk factor of age alone is enough to recommend that you undergo screening uh, at the age of 45. As I said, if, whether you're an Olympic athlete or you have diabetes and you're a smoker and you're overweight, you still get screened at 45. Now, the interval of screening varies. Um, 
it's again, it's not something you need to do every year, which may also turn people off again screen. If you have, if you are of average risk, uh, meaning you don't have risk factors such as family history of colon cancer, polyps, you don't smoke, you have no abdominal pain or anemia or blood loss or, or other symptoms. If you're average risk, uh, you may only need a colonoscopy every five to 10 years. Um, and then we adjust it based on the findings. For example, if you have a small polyp, you may need it another colonoscopy in three to five years. Uh, if you have a larger polyp, you may need another colonoscopy in one to two years. It all depends on what they find at the initial colonoscopy, but certainly it's not something you need to do every year. Uh, doctor, you mentioned um, age was the primary factor, but there, I think you alluded to some other factors um, that put you at risk. And I, I believe particularly within the Latino community, uh, where there is a high risk uh, for diabetes, for example, that's also a risk factor, isn't it? Yes, I mean, within the Hispanic community, um, increased body weight, uh, diabetes, um, and there's also other risk factors such as smoking and alcohol, uh, sedentary lifestyle. Um, these are factors you may see in all uh, ethnic groups, but you know, particularly in the Hispanic community, um, it may be a slightly increased prevalence of these risk factors, which should all the more prompt you to seek screening earlier, or at least on a timely fashion. Um, you know, part of your program is to educate the Latino and Hispanic community. Um, if your doctor is not um, offering you these options or discussing these screening uh, options, sometimes you have to be proactive and, and take charge of your own health with this knowledge and say, you know, am I somebody that should be screened? What are my risk factors? And, and, and seek the uh, available treatments and therapies that we have, uh, which are, are, again, top of the line in this area uh, to the, you know, for the Hispanic and Latino community, uh, as well as, uh, you know, everyone else in general. And I know, Doctor, that there have been advances in terms of treatment um, and uh, there have been a uh, drop in terms of overall deaths. And unfortunately, the Latino population has not uh, decreased in the same rate in terms of the deaths. T tell me more about that. Yeah, with, with increased screening or increased awareness of colon cancer, uh, we have been, and, and, and better technology, better surgeries and chemotherapies, we are slowly seeing a decrease in cancer deaths. Um, and we're also seeing it in the Hispanic community, but not as much. Uh, we're only seeing a 6% drop in mortality. So the rate of decline uh, among in, in colon cancer uh, deaths is less in the Hispanic community uh, than, than the general population. But you know, the, the reason isn't quite clear. It, it probably is due to hesitation in seeking uh, the appropriate uh, healthcare. Uh, and if I look at the numbers, non-white, uh, non-Hispanic whites have decreased about 15%, whereas Latinos only 6%. So that, that means that a Latino diagnosed with uh, colon cancer uh, is, is, is a much higher risk uh, uh, of dying from it. Uh, and obviously uh, it's all about early detection and getting the access to treatment, correct? That's exactly it. I mean, if, if the purpose of this show is to educate at least one person in the Hispanic community, uh, then you've done a great job. Uh, I mean, the way I envision programs or educational uh, shows like this is that the, the viewer can think about themselves and, and what their risk factors are for colon cancer and then start to talk about it, seek help at least, and then spread the, the, the message to their family members and, and that's how you, you uh, use the power of, of these shows and educate the, the community in general. Exactly. On, on, on a big I'm, problem that's real, yes. Unfortunately, we had to take a quick break. Uh, right. uh, this is great information. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. We continue our discussion with Dr. Michael De Rosario. He is the medical director for the Division of Colorectal Surgery at Atlantic Care. And again, doctor, we, we discuss uh, uh, the, the importance of, of screening uh, uh, 
Uh, we mentioned uh, some of the risk factors and age played a big part, but I understand that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the data suggests that colon cancer is approaching younger ages. In other words, the younger, you're getting them at a younger age. Uh, tell me more about that. Yes, it is a scary uh, phenomenon we're seeing. Um, for many years, the, the recommended initial screening age was 50 years old. Uh, just recently, they dropped that to 45 years old. Why? It's because we're seeing colon cancer in younger individuals. Uh, I mean, the youngest I've seen colon cancer was someone who was 18 years old. That's uncommon, but it exists. Uh, but we are seeing it at, at, at lower age groups, and it's affecting individuals uh, who are much younger than 45 as well. So, doctor, the, is there a recommendation if you're younger than 45 to get the screening done? Uh, what would be the factors or consideration to get screened at a younger age? Yes, a great question. If you are average risk, um, meaning no family history, no symptoms, you get it at 45 whether you have symptoms or not. Abdominal pain or bleeding is not, uh, or lack of that is not uh, a, a reason to not get your colonoscopy. So if you're younger than 45 and you have any symptoms such as weight, unexplained weight loss, uh, change in your bowel habits, bleeding from your rectum, such as when you move your bowels, anemia or low blood counts, or any unusual change in your overall health, you should seek uh, the advice of a physician to see if you should get your colonoscopy younger uh, because it does exist in younger patients. Well, doctor, uh, certainly you've been involved in this field for a very long time. And I just want to shift gears a little bit uh, to talk about you. I know you're uh, originally from the Philippines, uh, but you have uh, uh, that Latino blood because uh, the Spaniards were part uh, on the Philippines for a while. Uh, or occupied it, I should say, um, and uh, you have a Latino last name, but you're also very fluent in Spanish. Do you work a lot with the Latino community? Tell me more about your your story and and how you got involved in this field. Yeah, thanks, Bert. I mean, I, I grew up uh, in New York uh, in a Latino uh, community. Uh, I've spoken Spanish since uh, elementary school, um, and it has actually facilitated. Uh, the care of um, many of my patients, uh, a large part of whom are Spanish only speaking. Uh, and just, just communication itself and the, the ability to communicate uh, between uh, you know, ethnicities and languages does improve the health care and the treatment the patient receives. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I've been down here in Atlanta County uh, since 2003 and caring and, and for and serving the community, uh, all comers, uh, especially the Hispanic community, and we have been providing uh, the, the best in colorectal cancer care uh, since I've been here. Uh, in, in 2003, we did the first uh, laparoscopic minimally invasive colon surgery. And then we bumped it up a notch in 2011. We're doing robotic surgery now. What does that mean? It's not a big cut like you may have seen other people get. It's, it's smaller incisions uh, because let's face it, uh, whether you're retired or you're working or you're in school, and if you need surgery, everybody's busy. We don't have time, downtime. You can't take a lot of time off, which the big cut surgeries uh, end up making you do. The, the, the robotic or the minimally invasive surgery uh, gives you less pain and a quicker recovery time. Uh, and it, it is the, the cutting edge or top of the line uh, therapy for colon cancer at this time in the United States, if not the world. Oh, it's, it's, it's great that we have uh, you in our community and particularly uh, access uh, for our Latino uh, patients to be able to have access to you and speak of their own language. Uh, let me just ask you, how did you get involved in the field? I mean, uh, this is uh, it's not an easy field, uh, and I'm sure uh, a lot of schooling, but uh, something piqued your interest to get involved. Tell me more. Um, I, I just, I have, I have both parents, both my parents are uh, afflicted with cancer. Um, so uh, taking care of, of patients with cancer has become very personal to me. Um, I know what it's like to be on the other side of the, the hospital door where, where my parents are patients and uh, you feel helpless and, and vulnerable. So learning from their experience and my experience watching my, my parents undergo uh, cancer therapy, um, I, you have to provide some sense of compassion and personal care to each patient as an individual. Uh, patients are not treated as numbers. We, we take care of patients on a one-to-one -one basis, but 
I have a particular interest from personal experience uh, in taking care of uh, cancer patients, uh, and you know, most especially the colon cancer patients. Uh, uh, and you're located locally. Um, uh, what, where is your office located? And uh, uh, we'll put up the contact information as well. If folks want to get uh, in contact with your office. Sure. I mean, I'm again. My big thing is education, and part of, this is a great program to impart education on the Hispanic community and the community in general. If, if even one person can learn something about colon cancer from your show, then you've done a great job. Um, our office, I'm part of the Atlantic Care Physicians Group, the Surgical Services. Uh, we are in Galloway on Jimmy Leeds Road, uh, but you can certainly find information on the Atlantic Care webpage on their uh, colon and rectal surgery providers. Uh, and, and well, we have you, and uh, uh, we, we do have uh, young folks who uh, listen on to the program as well. Uh, those who may be uh, seeking this field, uh, medical field, um, uh, what, what kind of uh, advice will you give young ones who, uh, the youth who are seeking uh, to get into the medical field? Right. Um, don't listen to Google. Don't Google. Don't go to Dr. Google. I mean, seek a face-to-face -face consultation with a doctor, whether it be myself or, or somebody else, and just get the facts uh, and don't fear. Don't not take care of your personal health because of the fear of the unknown. As you alluded to or we talked about previously, there are, are many treatments. It's a very curable problem um, and it's a very preventable problem. But you have to take the initiative to get yourself screened uh, in order to catch the problem early. Again, uh, doctor, uh, great, great information. Uh, one, uh, one thing uh, about uh, uh, getting uh, screening is uh, uh, basically that you're able to uh, go back on your feet. You're, it's, a, it's a day process, right? It's, it, it's not, you're not, you're not out for a couple of weeks or anything like that. It's, it's relatively uh, a minor procedure and you're up and about the next day, correct? Oh, that's correct. The screening or the colonoscopy is a same day procedure. It takes 10 to 12 to 15 minutes. There's no cutting. It's a camera that looks inside. Uh, you may be required to take a few hours of rest afterwards because of the sedation or the anesthesia. But in terms of work restrictions or work limitations, you, you can return back to work fully uh, without any issues. Um, and you know, That's a lot easier recovery than, than if you needed to see me for a bigger surgery. And there's uh, no issues with insurance, right? It's a common procedure. So if you're age appropriate or have the symptoms, uh, certainly uh, most insurance or all insurances will cover that preventive measure, correct? Oh, for sure. I mean, screening colonoscopy is you know, covered by insurance. It is an approved procedure and it's something that's required. Uh, and even if you do not have insurance or you're financially challenged, that should not be a reason to not seek Screening, Atlantic Care certainly has great resources in terms of charity care uh, to make sure you don't get stuck with a, an unexpected bill, but we can help you uh, get yourself the medical care or the screening you need. There are cancer foundations throughout Atlantic County as well that will help those who may be lacking in insurance or are financially challenged. Dr. De Rosario, thank you so much. Muchas gracias. It's great information. Thank you for joining us. For having you, Bert, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the community. Well, thank you all for joining us once again here on Latino Motion. Choose to get your feet wet. To learn more about protecting our environment. Choose to read minds. To understand the human brain. Choose to get your hands dirty. To create a masterpiece. Stockton University offers 50 high quality academic programs, small class sizes, and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, offering primary, specialty, and urgent care, plus surgery and more. Atlantic City Electric, 
energy for a changing world, and South Jersey Gas.